Welcome to the Business Spotlight. Today is uh, a day where we're going to talk about marketing from the digital arena. You know, there's so much information out there when it comes to uh, YouTube, Vimeo, Facebook, LinkedIn. There's so many venues and they're all like great big playpens. But most people, most business owners, and if you're a business owner, you know that what we talk about are tools, tips, techniques to help you grow uh, your business to grow its influence and its affluence every day. Well, my guest today is Dave Swift. He's been on the show many times. You guys know he's a Stanford grad. He l literally, in his early years, worked for with what I'll call small companies like uh, Procter and Gamble, you know, Johnson and Johnson, uh, PepsiCo. You know, the small guys, right? Wrong. He helped them with their marketing plans, their strategies, their implementation. And he's been able to translate all of that down to where it's valuable to anybody from the solopreneur all the way up to the Fortune 10 type of applications. Dave, thanks for being on the show again. Thank you, Patrick. Good to be here as always. Oh, good. Well, I know that one of the things we want to talk about is digital marketing. When you think of digital marketing, what are some of the, the keys that start to spring out from your brain when you're, you're being asked about that? Well, the first thing I, I ask is, what's your strategic marketing plan behind digital marketing? Because digital marketing is a tactic um, or a series of tactics. And unless you have a good strategy, it's very hard for you to have it integrated and all going in the same direction. Likewise, with digital, you are portraying a positioning for your brand, whether you know you are or not, whether you have one or not, and it's better if you already have figured out what that is so you can tell your vendors who are producing and handling it for you, here's my strategy, here's my positioning, here's what I want to accomplish, and now let's determine which tactics digitally are going to be best to accomplish our goals. <laughs> One of the things that I see all the time, and I'm sure you do too, people that get into marketing and into this digital arena and it's like a, a, a crazy six shooter that's just you know going off in every direction, N no idea what he's doing. Well, yeah, no, you know the Sergio Leone uh, spaghetti westerns, we call it spaghetti marketing. Right. And there's no plan, there's no organization to it, it's just whatever vendor gets in your face first, and second, and third, and not necessarily in the best order or even the best tactics for that particular business. So. Yeah, it's a it's, uh, wild west out there still. <laughs> so when you begin the, the, the process, it starts with strategy. You, what are the steps that you go through in, in kind of putting together that strategy? And then what are, what are the tools that you look at today? And, and a lot of today is going to be really tons of content, tons of great information. And so I want to look at what's the beginning of the step, and then what do you see as the tools that you really need to have in your tool shed? I think probably the, the way I want to go today, Patrick, is to use a live example okay. um, and, and talk about Dallas Laser Dentistry and how it evolved from a marketing plan to the implementation and choice and implementation of various tactics, including digital marketing, and then how that has evolved over time into what is actually being done today. Because I think it's more illustrative than just talking about it as a, an academic, gee, what are they, and that sort of thing. Uh, as I said, it starts with a strategic plan, and that's the positioning, the branding, those sorts of things that are going to really drive everything else. And then following that, digital marketing was one of the areas where strategies were developed. Now, this goes back 10 years, so obviously things have changed a lot on the digital landscape. So back then, we started with the website. Still a good place to start uh, and has more legitimacy for most businesses than a Facebook page or something like that. And, and we created uh, an SEO optimized, back before too many people were talking about SEO, uh, website, which meant we had already determined what specific landing pages we wanted because we knew what particular services we wanted to promote for the practice. So we literally created a website that wasn't just an all everything. It had that index page, that landing page, but 
then when we promoted, we promoted to a specific landing page for each search term that was, was there. And on those pages, we created content that was designed to both engage, hopefully lead them to conversion, i.e. calling or filling out a form on that page, uh, but also doing it in a way that uh, was a little bit of its time. We, we had a lot of video uh, on that site way before video became popular and before uh, YouTube was purchased by Google and gave it any juice. Right. So uh, that's, that's kind of how we started it out. So well, One of the things that's important to note here is that what, what we're talking about with Dallas Laser Dentistry, the result of you working with them, has created the dentist that has ended up with the 2011, 2012, 2013 Consumer Choice Award winner for Dallas and Fort Worth. Correct. So, so there's, there's a lot of awareness that goes into that, and it's been created probably 85% through digital marketing. That, you know, folks, that's what we're really talking about. You know, Dave has created results that count. We've got so much more to give you today right after we get back from our sponsors today. Thanks again. Staying involved uh, in dentistry on every level, local, state, and national, makes me a better dentist. Our patients are our life and our livelihood, and we appreciate every single patient that walks in that door. And these are our family, and we treat them that way. Welcome back to the Business Spotlight. Today, my guest is Dave Swift. He is the marketing guru, and just go add, add a .us, and you've got his website. But we're talking about a live example, a case study, if you will, of how his marketing, consulting, and work with a dentist in the Dallas area created the 2011, 2012, 2013 Consumer Choice Award winner for cosmetic dentistry. Now, he doesn't work in just the dentistry area, but this is a great study because if you ever visit this particular dentist, you'll never forget it. It's, a, it's an awesome experience and everything from what you find, how you find her on the internet, all the way through the phone call, the experience, and then, you know, I even follow up afterwards. Great experience. Dave, you have created a masterpiece there. Let's talk about it. Yeah, from, uh, from where we were before the break was looking at specifically creating an SEO friendly website. Uh, when you launch a website and you don't immediately get organic ranking, so we had to go to pay-per-click right. and put together a strategy for pay-per-click that would balance, uh, in terms of keywords and keyword phrases, what we were wanting to do. We also put together a strategy, and, and you can go after primary keywords or you can go after tails. And from an efficiency standpoint, i.e. effectiveness and efficiency standpoint, we went after a lot of tail terms. and with great, great effect because you immediately get bumped up into the number one position and the patient that you get from it is just as valuable as somebody that you paid 10 times as much in order to, to try to incite to come to your, uh, your website and send. Uh, but from there, we then went to email marketing uh, because one of the things we collected when people called in was their emails or filled out a form, we collected their emails and then went into drip campaigns. And I'm going to pre probably be using a lot of terms that we're going to assume that the listeners here have some exposure to, or you can Google it and, and find out what I'm talking about. And Google knows all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but essentially, we, we then looked at each, of each created different uh, trees for each of these particular services that we were trying to promote. And if we didn't close them or get them in to begin with, well, then the drip campaign proceeded to continue over time to refresh them. Um, so we went from there and then newsletters, again, used newsletters for that and also as a retention thing for those that, that did come in. Digital or hard copy? Oh, digital. Okay. Uh, I, I was not going to do anything that cost me printing dollars <laughs> uh, if I could help it. Um, and that was quite, quite a shift from the way uh, vendors marketed things to dentists. Right. I remember I sat my 
the dentist here proceeded to have me come to a uh, seminar with her, and they, they were presenting, it was a printing company, putting on a seminar, and guess what they wanted to do? They wanted to print brochures and all these things you handed out, and new patient packets, and all this stuff. And all I saw was, why are we doing it on paper? Why right. can't we just email it to them? You know, um, which at that time was kind of a novel idea. So essentially I said, no, you're not, we'll create business cards. But other than that, no, I'm just going to do it this way. So uh, that, that really was the, the start of it. And then as, when Google purchased uh, YouTube, we then started, okay, we had 75 videos sitting on that site as well for, for content as well as educational and conversion purposes. And we said, okay, now there's so we get some juice for it. So we then converted and had them go on YouTube and then link back to, uh, to the site. And that, uh, that started with one site. Right. Then we went to a second site. And we went to a third site. Then we proceeded to develop websites that were procedure specific. Right. Okay. All pointing back to one of the three basic sites. The how does that, does that still work, that, that model of what I call a, it's kind of a web of, of sites. It's where each site becomes kind of an attractor factor. And then it's, it all is is kind of a, a, uh, a catch point. Mm -hmm. And then you're trying to, in a sense, pass them through. Does that? Uh, Google, most recent version, I forget whether it was Panda, Penguin, whatever, uh, beast. basically said, gee, we don't like that. Okay. So it, they didn't put anybody in the sandbox for it, but it wasn't going to have as much of a ranking factor. In other words, they weren't going to count those inbound links to the extent. Now, from an effectiveness factor, the degree to which those procedure-specific sites could themselves be ranked and were written in an SEO fashion to be able to do that, yeah, they can still work but they're not going to help you with your primary site SEO like they used to. Some of the things that I'm hearing that, that's interesting is that you guys are ve were very, I mean, long-term committed to a marketing strategy. It wasn't just chase a dollar with, you know, with, for, to create a result, an instant oh, type of thing. Absolutely. It was, it was create a positioning. Right. It's what you would do if you were trying to, you know, on television or, or whatever, you do those traditional commercials, create an image. Uh, yeah, we want to create an image. Well, the other thing, though, and I think this is something that all of you should be listening for, is look at um, how, when we get into this, how um, we, they began to use social media and other forms of digital to create a higher level of attractor factor. Because what I, you know, as I look at digital media today, Google is the 900 pound gorilla in the room, they want interactivity and these guys created it. We've got much more to come, we'll be right back. Staying involved uh, in dentistry on every level, local, state and national, makes me a better dentist. Our patients are our life and our livelihood and we appreciate every single patient that walks in that door. And these are our family and we treat them that way. And welcome back to the Business Spotlight. Today we we're talking with Dave Swift on ways that you can grow your business. And we're using a case study. Dallas Laser Dentistry is a, is a, uh, a, a, a family-owned practice in the Dallas area that has created 2011, 2012, 2013 Consumer Choice Award winner. I mean, they have really created the results. Dave's strategy and implementation had everything to do with it. Dave, we set up last time talking about, we left off talking about social media. You guys have created a tremendous amount of interaction on your Facebook page and in your social media. How did you do that? Well, we, uh, we did a number of things. First of all, had a professional put together the actual page rather than trying to do Novel it ourselves. Idea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, we have each our areas of expertise, but if you can have an expert do it, do it. Uh, then um, 
we had another expert help us with, okay, we could, we have a nice installed base, as it were, of patients, and we invited all of them to like us and so forth. Uh, but then we went and we started using Facebook advertising mm -hmm. to, uh, to start to appeal to other, other folks. We also hired uh, someone to do content. Uh, in addition to the ad hoc content that we could generate in the practice with pictures we could post or, or things like that, we also hired somebody who knew what the current target audience at the time of, of Facebook was actually looking for, such that they would open it and would actually interact with it and so forth. So uh, it's like been an evolving thing. Now we also took video, so we post videos. So this show and shows before that we've done with, uh, with Dallas Laser Dentistry, those videos were edited and pieces of them were put on social media as well. And, and yet it's, we didn't jump into Facebook right away and this is a, a, a key thing is we first looked at the evolving demographics right. of the particular form of social media. And, and the reason we did that was because when it first started, it was not a cosmetic dental patient who was on Facebook. No, it was, a, it was essentially, it was a playpen for children is what yeah, it felt it was, like. Yeah, it was the, the MySpace, MySpace folks one step up, you know, going to something else. But it quickly evolved to where, gee, if they're on Facebook, they're old, meaning they're over 21. <laughs> <laughs> I heard, saw that one the other day. And, and so now the people that are on Facebook are female 3554, which is our sweetheart bullseye in terms of the strategic marketing plan for cosmetic dentistry, for Dallas Laser Dentistry. And so it was only obvious that, okay, then we, now we gotta go there. Now, how do you uh, create a geolocal marketing as well? What are the steps that you're doing digitally to enhance the visibility within, say, 15, 20 miles of your location? Well, for that, uh, obviously the, the Google Plus and the uh, page, what used to be the Maps pages and, you know, that sort of thing, uh, make it, and this is something anybody can do, and it doesn't really cost you anything, is claim your page with Google. And then don't just claim it. You've got all sorts of options for content that they will allow you put on there, both visual and copy. And do it. I mean, it's, it doesn't, as I say, cost you anything. And as Google has evolved to where they're trying to really force the, the f local first, it's the perfect, least expensive opportunity for a, a business that has a storefront, and that's the key, that has a storefront, to be able to get Google to refer people to you. I, I've said this and I've so many times, if you want Google's love, you got to play with Google's toys. Absolutely. So Google Plus, Hangouts, all these things that are on YouTube. I mean, you've got to, to use those tools. The pay-per-click, oh my gosh. You know, if you're going to spend money with them, they like you more. Whether yeah. they admit to that or not, I, I just, <laughs> I can't see it any other way. Well, even going way back before Google was a big gorilla, Yahoo, um, I remember I, I made the determination to put a Yahoo map on that first website. And it's amazing what happened to our SEO. Suddenly, we rose up in the rankings with Yahoo and MSN and all them because I had a Yahoo map. You know, the other thing you guys have done that's very successfully is you've gotten your clientele to go into the internet universe and post reviews. Correct. I mean, yeah. that, <laughs> talk about brilliance. I have to commend you, not sucking up, just like, oh, wow, because they love when people love you. They do, and, and we have over a 1,000 reviews out there that are actually posted authoritative and so forth. And, and it's part of the process that you talked about within the practice of they come in the door, they call first and so on and so forth. But even after they finish, they receive an email that night and that they were in there. And that email asks them to do two things. Number one, rate their experience in breaking the experience into particular segments so that we can actually evaluate the people and the process and make sure it's working like it should. And then secondly, we invite them to review the practice. And those reviews clearly go up there. And if they have a Gmail account, 
we recontact them, say, how about going and doing it so Google really loves it? Anything you can do to, to create seven to ten different applications is, is, is what I call it, or repurposing the content, the review, things of that nature. Folks, I hope you're getting a lot out of this. I know I am, but, and I'm in this field. So we got one more segment. Stick around. Business Spotlight with Dave Swift. We'll be right back. Staying involved uh, in dentistry on every level, local, state, and national, makes me a better dentist. Our patients are our life and our livelihood, and we appreciate every single patient that walks in that door. And these are our family, and we treat them that way. Welcome back to the Business Spotlight. I'm Pat Dewar. Today I have Dave Swift on the show with me and he is talking about essentially digital marketing because as the marketing guru, he has a lot of good information that can help you grow your business, build your authority. And we're using a case study, an example of a, a company that he actually helped grow to uh, a point where they're award-winning in every category, it seems like, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area especially. Dave, I know we've been talking about all the d ways that you can get into digital marketing, but I know this time you wanted to talk about just the blog? Yeah, I mean, blogs uh, are, are really, think of it as content creation. Um, the biggest issue in terms of Google really loving you, which is important in the digital world these days. When they roll most of the results. Yeah, um, is you want to be able to create meaningful content and engaging content. And there are a variety of ways to do it. One is blogging. And there's some conditions around it and so forth. But you can, if you've got something to offer, that's the first thing. It's got to be meaningful and helpful. Otherwise, people will tune out. So Can't just be a sales pitch. Can't just be a sales pitch. In fact, it shouldn't be a sales pitch, in my opinion. Um, it should be informational, funny if you know how to do that. Uh, but but engaging right primarily and and that's one way to do it blog it on your site blow it out sometimes you can you can have it set up to automatically go out to your various social media things but I will say one of the th one of the watchouts is don't just automatically have a blog on your site go to Facebook Twitter LinkedIn that sort of thing because the audience in each of those is quite different right. and what they are on when they're on is for very different reasons. And so therefore what you want to do is pick uh, specifically what you're talking about or, or how you're presenting it and only put it on the, uh, the social media platform where it makes the most sense. Visuals are the most powerful, be it static picture or video. And video goes a long way towards creating authority and conversion. If nothing else, it does another thing. It holds them on your site when they do it, and Google's looking at your stats and saying, how long were they engaged? Nice. The longer it's, they're engaged, the more you must have, and therefore, the more likely your SEO ranking is going to go up. So, uh, so those are some things. The, um, one of the things that's relatively new on the scene is, is what's called remarketing. Right. And, and that's a digital form of follow-up, as it were, uh, whereby you, you put a little snippet of code on the, the site and essentially a banner ad follows them around wherever they go. And so if they move from your site, you can keep talking to them by flashing something in front of their eyes wherever they go. And if you didn't close them the first time because they weren't paying attention, well, after a while, they might just click on that thing. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people don't get what you just said, and, and, and the thing that's so awesome is, is that remarketing is something that you need to learn about, okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. You need to learn about, because if somebody clicks on your site, you'd kind of like to know, I'd like to keep up with them, okay? So Google's created a system where you can trail along and can, can then go, oh, remember me, remember me? <laughs> Yeah, give them more you opportunities, keep, right? You, you never can get rid of me. Yeah, <laughs> I, I just keep following you around like a little puppy dog. But 
and popping up when you least expect it. So <laughs> it's, it's a great, great way to go. But I think the lesson to be taken away, besides the fact that there are individual tactics, is content is still what's going to create uh, most of the energy and the conversion. And most people, or they hopefully are using their website to convert people from browsers to customers. And, and you have to have good content that is in a format that is appealing to those who actually come and view the site. Well, the other thing though, and, and, and I encourage you, if you're watching this, you should like hire Dave, okay? <laughs> um, call him, get connected to him, because one of the things that a lot of people don't do is actually strategically plan their marketing and everything they do. You can see that a little bit of planning ahead of time can put you on a path where you're constantly enhancing what you're doing, but you're also able to build a larger and larger uh, following in all that you do. Um, how, do you, how would you want somebody to connect to you? Well, they can go to the website, and that's uh, themarketingguru.us uh, is the best way to do it. Um, and from there, we'll get in touch. Okay. And you've got to contact us or whatever, all those, that sort all of thing. All those good things, yeah. Um, beyond that, when somebody does engage you, uh, do they need to be in the Dallas-Fort Worth area? or do you? No, not at all. all um, I am very ecumenical when it comes to location. Uh, they don't have to be local. Uh, uh, just, as, just as we manage to uh, uh, get patients for this particular practice from all over the country, for the same reason I'm more than willing to have clients from all over the country. <laughs> well, and it just starts with a phone call or you can create a Google Hangout with them or something, mm -hmm. you know, Skype or whatever. I mean, the idea is talk to you first. Absolutely, yeah. And talk to me before you go and contract with a vendor just on a one-off, gee, we need to go do this. Let's help you put a plan together so that you optimize what's going to happen and your return on investment is going to be maximized. Well, and that's the important thing is that when you're talking about planning your strategy, building your funnel, so to speak, literally creating an attractor factor, right? It's getting you engaged with your clientele. Dave Swift has got some great tools, some techniques, some ways uh, and strategies of getting you where you want to be, which for most of us is door swinging, phone ringing, you know? I mean, it comes down to let's talk, let's create, let's create some magic together, so to speak. I'm Pat Dewar. This is the Business Spotlight. Dave Swift has been on the show today. You need to connect to him at themarketingguru.us. We'll talk to you all next time.